Shalom. Hello again. This program is the second of a series of three, and we're presenting our musical play, Beloved Thief. So watch it tonight and don't miss next week because, of course, that's the conclusion. Tell a friend to take a look. We'll have recaps at the top of this show and the next one to kind of bring you up on the story. It's a musical show. You'll see me in it as the narrator, uh, kind of explaining the story, and you'll see actors and singers, and we made sets of first century Israel. Uh, we made up names for the characters that kind of fit the times. You won't find every name uh, in the scriptures, but we named our characters. Um, we have 14 songs in the program, and we put them on a new album, Beloved Thief, and you can get this uh, or in cassette form if you like to use a cassette. All the songs of the program will be on Beloved Thief. I'll tell you later uh, how you get that. Uh, we have it on videotape as well, and this time we've made uh, videotape with all three programs. It's the complete play with no interruptions. We can supply it to you on uh, VHS or beta this time. We, we have the means to do both formats. I wish you would think about getting this videotape because we can't always show the show on, on TV, and it's a little bit difficult to, to organize live performances. It's a new age where you can own a musical play and have it in your living room in this form. So if you have a, a cassette player, why uh, get the videotape? I'll tell you about it later. Uh, this section of the play is, is all about this cup. We're going to recap the action now, and you'll see the bridegroom singing, I saw her, and, and the bride-to-be singing, I saw him today. And then you'll see that pristine moment when he offers her the bridal cup. She can drink it or not drink it. Let's watch what happens. I saw her, I saw her, I saw my bride-to-be This morning I saw her, the only one for me You may say I'm crazy, I swear by God above The whole world is crazy if this isn't love That was our bridegroom and this is our bride-to-be Don't you have several brothers and sisters? The bridegroom visits yes. at the house of the bride and talks with her family, and he brings his marriage contract and the price for the bride. Why have you come to visit us? And he's going to propose to her by pouring a cup for her. I go to prepare a place for you. Well, that was the great moment. From the moment she drank that cup, the adventure is just beginning. Now, let's go back to our play. Now, the bride was taken by surprise, to be sure. When the chamber would finally be ready, the groom and his brothers and his groomsmen would sneak over to her street, get close to the house, make sure it was dark and everyone was asleep. Now, there were certain rules. The groom couldn't just rush in and grab her out of her bed. The God of Israel is kinder than that. When they would come close enough to her house to be heard, someone in the wedding party would have to shout. When she heard that shout, she knew he'd be there in a moment. 
She had time only to light her lamp and get her veil on, and her sisters and bridesmaids would light their lamps and join her, and they'd meet the men and go through the village, and, and the people of the village could know there was a wedding because they heard the young people laughing at midnight and going by with the oil lamps. Now, back in our play over at the bridegroom's father's house, things were progressing. If this young man had never built anything else in his life, he was going to get this chamber ready. And it was a project. It had to be well built. The honeymoon was seven days long, just as the believers will be seven years in heaven with their bridegroom. Now, the bride had no idea when he would come. That only depended on how good a builder he was. Mary must have been glad to have a contract from Joseph. After all, a carpenter should know how to put up a bridal chamber. Now, his father was the judge on when the thing was really done. You can see the logic there. If it were up to the young man, he'd throw up some kind of simple shelter and just go and get the girl. But his father would inspect it from time to time to see when it was really ready. After all, it had to be beautiful. You don't honeymoon just any place. And therefore, the father of the bridegroom chose the wedding day. Well, it was a long job and good work. It would teach David patience and diligence. It would give him a useful skill. And most of all, it would keep his mind where it belonged, on the lucky girl. Have you been working all day? All night and all day. I've seen your bride-to-be, such a beautiful girl. I had a feeling you'd be finishing this job quickly. It is almost finished, but I still have work to do. When will the wedding be? Only my father knows. Oh. says it's done oh, in that night I'll call to you your bridegroom comes I'll wait and see my tender bride to be how quickly he will cry My father's house are many mansions, places there for all to dwell, and his children will fill those lovely mansions, all his children are 
faithful Israel. So I must go, yes, I must go. But if I go, I'll prepare a place for you, and I'll return. I'll cry aloud, I'll call your name, and you will follow me. Follow me to my father's house and to our mansion, where at last will sanctify our love. All around our friends and those who love us, like those mansions in my Father's house above. So I must go, yes, I must go. But if I go, I'll prepare a place for you. And I'll return, I'll cry aloud, I'll call your name, and you will follow me. Just as in our own nation today, throughout Israel, believers in the Messiah gladly assembled themselves together. They sang songs and gave testimonies and told the spellbinding stories of eyewitness encounters with the Messiah himself. In our play, Devorah and Martha have heard of the man born blind who was healed by the Messiah. They go to the believers' assembly to see him. Devorah, we should not be here. But don't you want to see the blind man? Everyone in the marketplace says his eyes are open now. I don't believe that. Look, isn't that Hannah who sold you the bracelet this morning? Yes, but I didn't know that Hannah was a believer. Devorah, she is looking at us. We should go now. Come on. Wait. Just wait until the blind man comes. I want to see if what they say is true. I don't believe that anyone can make a blind man see. They must know that we don't believe the way they do. We should go now before they ask us to leave. These people welcome everyone. Who is that? Their leader, Ishmael. What if their Messiah should come here? If he comes, we will leave. And wherever the believers in Messiah gathered, they celebrated the promised land. Israel was Messiah's choice when he came to the world, and the believers of all time have sung about that. They sang their hearts out. Yisrael Havati, they sang. Israel, my love. In the land he gave to me, Israel, the heart my heart and soul and mind are free. The Israel, the heart of the Father, comfort me. Israel, the heart God, the Son, I wait for thee. The Israel, the heart where the land as fair as thee. Yeah, man. 
Some of the members of the congregation had actually met the Messiah during his ministry. A group from Cana has come to the service, and one of them has a very special story to tell. About the time that Jesus and his friends arrived at the wedding, the wine supply was running short. When Mary, the mother of our Lord, told him we had no wine, he asked that the stone water pots be filled to the brim with water. And then all who were there saw him change the water into wine. Water into wine, water into wine. Can you remember the water into wine? It was there in Cana on my wedding day. The mother of the teacher as it came away. All the guests were gathered, laughing, dancing. Then the Galilean rabbi came in with his men. Everyone was thirsty, but all the wine was gone. I well know of the miracles the Messiah has performed, although some people have warned me not to speak of what I've witnessed. How can I keep silent? I am Ezra, who led the blind man through the streets of Jerusalem. This is true. I've seen him many times in the marketplace. Anna, hear me. The man who was blind from birth no longer needs me to guide him. What are you saying? Look, is this not the man you've seen begging in the streets? Leah. Yes, yes, this is the blind beggar. Is this possible? Martha, look. Do you see the blind man? There, by Ezra. Yes, yes, I see him. And he sees us. Whereas I was blind, now I can see. And I'll tell the whole world what God did for me. They call him a sinner, as bad as can be. If he's such a sinner, then why can I see? I 
neighbors said, wait, this is not the same man. They said, there are beggars all over this land. They beg from the temple to far Galilee. Well, I just know this, now I can see. so kind can anything good come from far galilee well i don't know that i know i can see my parents arrived when the trial had begun they asked them and asked them if i were the son the matter i told them is just black and white the man simply healed me, he gave me my sight. He sent me to wash in the pool of Siloam. And when I did that, I could see my way home. You say he's of Satan by demons, I'm odd. But this man who healed me is my Lord and my God. should not have come. Well, most people have never seen a Hebrew Christian service, although they go on all the time and always have, but we tried to picture the original. You know, those services were different in ancient Israel. Those were the only time in history that people could come in and give an eyewitness testimony of the Messiah. People were in the congregation who had actually met the Messiah and heard his teachings. You know, we spend time when we worship talking about what the Lord meant by what he said, how valuable it would be to have someone there who actually heard what he said and had a personal impression of him. Well, in Israel today, of course, the believers are still meeting. Uh, we've televised that before. They tend to meet in out-of-the-way places. Uh, for obvious reasons, they're not the most popular people in, in some towns. Uh, but it's a democracy. It's a free country. And, and there's more religion going on in Israel, I guess, than any other country in the world. And so the services go on pretty much as you saw them. And my experience in Israel was that the emphasis in services was on uh, testimonies and singing and uh, quite a bit of good verse-by-verse -verse Bible teaching, which is, of course, a Jewish tradition. And uh, they are still singing about Israel. You can believe that, uh, especially having been restored to the land. You know, as I travel in the churches, I'm thrilled to see the, the churches singing Israeli songs too these days, and I think that's just a preparation for the kingdom to come. We're on our way to the land, so we're learning the music of the land. When all is said and done, we'll be Americans for our three score and ten or whatever we have here, and Israelis for a thousand years, if I understand the directions of the kingdom in the Bible. Well, the songs of the musical are on our new album, Beloved Thief. 
Uh, there's 14 songs in all, 11 of them are brand new ones. And uh, you can get the album or the cassette tape. Uh, $10 or more is the gift for the album or the tape, please. And uh, let me tell you, this is good music. When we were recording the music, the people in the studio, including yours truly, uh, had very real tears. We'll have a videotape this time. Without interruptions, $29 or more, please, is the gift for the videotape. You can get them at the post office box. And Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. 